After more than four years, September 2023 has been my last month at Amazon. Hi, welcome back to the channel. I feel like I have to shoot this video since my, the most popular video on my channel is actually my day at Amazon and I feel like I owe to all the people that watched that video at least once an explanation on why I decided to leave this company. Before we start, please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you will be notified by all the new videos that I'm gonna release in the coming weeks and months. So there are several reasons why I decided to leave Amazon and uh, full disclaimer, none of them is connected to having like bad managers or bad teams because I really have to stress this point. Uh, I always had incredible managers and my team has always been amazing with me. So I didn't really have any issues in, in that regard. So maybe let me give you like a bit of a background story on my career and trajectory at Amazon. I started in Luxembourg in 2019 and uh, all the years that I spent there were actually pretty good. But when I decided to relocate to Amsterdam, I started to facing some little issues, um, especially when it comes to compensation and going to the office. Now, I know that some of the complaints that I'm gonna make are gonna sound, you know, like first world problem for a lot of people, uh, but I have, to, I have to say that those things were really bothering me and um, each situation is different, uh, so the, what is very applicable to me might not be applicable for you and vice versa. So starting first with, uh, with compensation, which was actually the driver that pushed me to look outside. Amazon, as all the companies, they, since they have like several different entities, each entity in each country has their own rules in terms of benefits, in terms of um, like salary bans and so on. I'm not gonna go too much into detail, details on that, but if you want, let me know in the comments. But basically the idea is that the salary is directly connected to uh, your uh, the cost of life in the city in which you're moving or like in which you're gonna in the country in which you're gonna work for the company now what i was expecting at the beginning was actually to keep the more or less the same salary or actually get a little increase because a lot of things that in the netherlands are very expensive and you have to pay for such as healthcare uh, you have to pay every month for uh, for um, being part of the system and even though you can decide more or less how much you want to pay it's never lower than 130 150 euros per month and that's just to be part of the system let alone like uh, when you actually have a problem and then you have to pay other uh, like other money but this is uh, this is like a different topic so just uh, just by thinking the fact that healthcare is something that i need to pay when in luxembourg i didn't have to um, also public transport is probably one of the most expensive in Europe in the Netherlands. Yes, you can take the bike, but like as a foreign year, at least when you start living in the Netherlands, your first go-to will not be the bike, but it will be the bus or the tram. And uh, that can really impact on, the, on your monthly, uh, monthly balance. And also um, another issue was the, connected to the fact that groceries here at least when I moved, were more, way more expensive compared to what I left in Luxembourg. Now, of course, I don't know if the situation uh, rebalanced there as well, but basically the sum of all those things and the fact that while in Luxembourg, for example, Amazon was providing lunch vouchers so that you could use to uh, pay food or like uh, pay, even, even paying in some supermarkets uh, in, in the Netherlands were not available. So my idea was like, okay, I'm gonna move to the Netherlands, my salary is gonna increase or maybe stay the same and everybody's gonna be happy. While instead, my very first thing that made me think, oh, okay, that's not good, was when I got my transfer offer and actually I got a pay cut of 17%. Now, 17% is a lot of money. Um, and I, not gonna lie, I kind of panicked a bit. I was like, oh my God, this is, this is really bad. Uh, so I started trying to look also at companies in, uh, in the meantime, like in other companies that are in Amsterdam, because of course, like you are, here is different than Luxembourg. You have way, uh, a much bigger choice in terms of like uh, companies that you could work for, at least in my sector, so like in data science and uh, engineering. And what I was surprised was that uh, in terms of total compensation, um, the compensation provided by other companies for uh, positions which, are, which were a bit 
lower level compared to mine, but actually higher. And I was like really confused. But at the time, I just brought this information as a data point to my current manager to say, hey, we need to work on my compensation because outside I could get much better. And that, that could be uh, a problem if you want me to stay in the team and stay motivated for that. So long story short, compensation pushed me to start looking outside, but uh, in the company they promised me, you know, our oh, next uh, annual review for the salary, we're gonna balance that, or even like, oh, with the promotion, we're gonna balance that. And uh, fun fact, when I, got, when I got promoted recently, I received my new promotion statement and I told my manager was making fun of me because it was like so little, the promotion, that I was like, wait a second, what's going on here? And uh, this is connected also to what I explained in some other videos uh, regarding like uh, being aware of uh, how much other people are making around you, especially if, if they are in the same job uh, family, because if I would have looked into that, I would have been like, okay, I got promoted, my salary got a little bump. Um, it's, by the way, a bump that was way below the inflation at the time. So I was like, okay, uh, I can accept that, uh, move on uh, and like live my life in Amsterdam. Uh, however, I knew that uh, people with the same tenure as me, same work experience as me, were making way much more in Amazon. And uh, yeah, that's, that's, that was just like, a, okay, I, cannot, I don't want to, to go under this treatment, especially if I can look outside and, uh, and find in something else. So that's why one of the reasons why I started looking out for, uh, for new roles. The second one, of course, is like a return to the office. Now, I know that some people are going to be like, oh, you're, you're complaining that you have to go to the office. Come on, like yeah, we always been to the office. It's better you have in phase, uh, like you have a person to person conversations and blah, blah, blah. I agree on all the line. The big problem in my case is that my entire team is in the US. So like the closest person that I had in the team uh, was in the East Coast. Actually, still is in the East Coast. So I had to... What, it, what would be the point for me of going back to the office just to wait 6 p.m. to have my first meeting with the team? Because like the idea is that if I'm at home, I can start later, I don't care. I can just like take my meetings and then I don't have to stress about uh, running to the office, uh, staying there the entire day, waiting for these 4 or 5 p.m. meetings, sitting at my desk. Because also the offices, of course, are not uh, bounded to like they are not built for accommodating everybody having meetings at the same time so a lot of people have meetings at their desks and as much as you can bring noise cancelling headphones is def definitely not ideal to work in such an environment especially if you need to focus on something so that was also like a problem because having to be forced to go to the office but not having the benefits of being in the office which is basically meeting your colleagues or like having face-to-face -face interaction to me it sounded completely nuts, but uh, the problem is that that's the direction the company decided to go. And uh, I kind of understand it for some teams. I know that my case is a very corner case, uh, which ended up being created by chance because I actually initially joined a team that was still like in a different country than mine, but it was in Europe. Um, and then like internal movements mo moved me to the US to, uh, to uh, assign me to a US team. So yeah, so those, those are like a kind of a two of the main uh, big push towards, the, towards, towards like start me starting looking for a different position. The last one is actually connected to the Netherlands because um, Amazon is a pretty small uh, market in the Netherlands, at least for what I do. It's great for software engineers, it's great for solution architects, it's, it's, it's amazing for anything that is like marketing, sales related. But for business intelligence engineer, it's not that great yet, in the sense that uh, there are not so many open positions. And as you know, like uh, all the companies at the moment are kind of like in a hiring freeze and stuff. So my option of seeking for an internal transfer to a different team were basically not existent. So summing those three things, like uh, why would I have to go through an internal transfer that was actually not even available just to keep the same salary which is still much lower than anything i could get outside uh, and also in terms of like career perspective it would not make me go as fast as like uh, seeing something new and going outside and 
uh, you know, like work for a different company with different tools and so on. That's why after four and nine months total, after counting also my internship, I decided to leave um, and uh, seek for new adventures. Uh, I know that a lot of times you hear about uh, people saying that uh, the workplace was horrible, uh, the pressure was um, like incredibly crushing and things like that. I honestly um, never experienced that. So I'm really, really blessed with the fact that in my case, Amazon has been actually a really fun place to work. Um, as it's a place that I would totally recommend anybody working for, especially if you are in the same location as your team. And I'm really up to answer any questions you might have in the comment regarding like how it is work for Amazon. So I'll maybe collect anything you would like to ask me and maybe make a new video just, just on that or like even regarding how the compensation work as, works at Amazon. That's also like another interesting thing to know, especially if you're looking in, uh, in such companies. Um, so what's next for me? Well, probably by the time this video is up, I will be already at my new job. Um, I'm not gonna publish it on LinkedIn immediately uh, because of course you know like, there is a probation period so I want to be sure first <laughs> that my probation period is passed before uh, making it public but I did leave a tiny hint in this video so if you are uh, really looking um, you can if you're, if you're actually a bit aware of, of things uh, you will be able to understand what's my next destination. Uh, the only thing I can say is that uh, I am uh, really excited because it's a field in which I always wanted to work since I basically decided to study computer engineering. So that's, uh, um, I feel like a, that's a big success for myself. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this heart-to-heart uh, -heart conversation. Um, I know that I've been silent for a while, but you know, between vacations and actually changing job, uh, it wasn't really easy to find the time to sit and have some uh, chat with the camera. So if you like this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, if you want to uh, hear more about me and you speak Italian, which is uh, unfortunately like a very strict condition, you can subscribe to my newsletter. I'm gonna leave the link in the description. And yes, um, until next time, ciao.